Good evening and welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 14th of December uh, 2023. In the absence of the Leader of the Council, may I ask Cabinet for nominations and seconder to chair this meeting? Councillor Clements. Uh, thank you, um, Andrew. Can I uh, propose that Samuel Smith uh, chairs tonight's meeting? Do you have a seconder? Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Thank you. Thank you. And can we take a vote? That's carried. Councillor Smith, over to you. Thank you, Andrew. Right, uh, well, welcome to tonight's Cabinet Committee on the 14th of December. Um, so just to be aware, we uh, are being filmed at the moment to be uploaded onto YouTube. And um, first agenda item um, is apologies for absence. Um, we are aware of um, uh, TJ, uh, sorry, Thomas J. Um, just for the record, he was the deputy at the time. This absence was well planned in advance. Um, we also have uh, an apologies from Councillor uh, Jeremy Oates, although just for the record, he's only been put into post. Um, so uh, the diary for this cabinet meeting was well before he was in post. So that's the apologies for absence. And um, declarations of interest, has anybody got any? Okay, thank you. So, question. Oh, sorry. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think there's anything contentious on there. I've had a read through. I've noted the amendment on one of those. Um, so, it all looks to be in order. Is everybody okay with that? Do I have a proposer for that? Fantastic. Is everybody in agreement? Great. We've got a full show of hands there. Thank you. Uh, so, yep. Agenda item four, do we have any questions? No. And number five, matters referred to the cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedure rules. No, not, none at all on that one as well. So moving into the first report, which is uh, agenda item six, council tax base uh, 24-25. This of course would have been um, introduced by the portfolio holder for operations and finance. Um, however, um, I will pass this um, straight on to Becky, I believe. Thank you very much. Sorry, yes, of course. So this report is to set the council tax base for the council for 2024-25. And the council is required to calculate the council tax base each financial year um, and notify the county council under the precepting authorities. Um, this year, the council tax is set to, in, the council tax base is set to increase slightly. It's at twenty three thousand four hundred and seventy nine, which which is just a small increase of one hundred and three. It's a sli slightly smaller increase than previous years, um, and that's that's because of the banded um, scheme for council tax. Um, the Remind me of the name. Um, Localised accounts tax reduction scheme. That's the one <laughs> that was approved just a couple of weeks ago. So, um, so that had an effect of slightly reducing the council tax base. So, this is the Bandy council tax base, twenty three thousand four hundred and seventy nine. So, and if anybody's got any questions on that. Yeah, so um, there is one recommendation, I believe. Um, the Tamworth Borough Council um, resolves its calculation of the council tax base for the year 2024-25 to be uh, 23479. Uh, and that's that one. So does anybody have any questions or comments? Okay, we'll just go straight on to um, who would like to move that one. And a seconder. Anybody would like to second it? Excellent, Councillor Summers. Right, that's a uh, well, show of votes. Yep. Yeah, okay, that's unanimous. Thank you for that. So moving into agenda seven, write-offs. So again, I believe is it yourself, Becky, that's going to yeah, go through this one? this one? Thank you. Over to you. <coughs> So um, this report is to endorse the amount of debt written off for the period 1st of April to the 30th of September. 
So you'll see in the executive summary, the total amount of debt to, to be reduced, uh, to be written off is £57,547.95. This is lower than at this point in last year, where the figure stood at nearly 71,000. Um, the bad debts will be written off against bad debt reserves, so there's no impact on the, the current year revenue of the council. Um, you'll see in the appendices the details of the debts that have been written off. Um, so if anybody's got any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take those. Um, the recommendation is um, to that members endorse the amount of debt to be written off for the period 1st of April 23 to 30th of September 23. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, go for it. Um, just because I've never really looked into it in, so, in as much detail as I have this year, I take it that this debt is debt that we're never ever going to ba get back, so it's just not worth the chase. Yes, it, so we make every effort that we can before we consider writing off any debt. Um, there are some occasions, you'll notice, I think it was in one of the appendices, um, appendix, a, there was a, some debt that was written off in previous previously that we've managed to, to to claw back. Some of that's usually because of court orders and things that we didn't think we'd get. So, so if there is an opportunity following following on from it being written off, we will still take that opportunity. But normally, um, it's because um, reasons, for example, that somebody's deceased, or we just think there's no there's just no. Um, reasonable chance of us being able to to get that that debt paid. Does anybody else have any more comments or questions? Okay. Well, um, the recommendation was already laid out uh, by the director. Uh, would anybody like to move that? And a second that. Fantastic. Got that. And show of hands to, of supporting that one. Thank you. So moving on. So, Agenda 8, Review of Temporary Reserved Retained Funds and Provisions. So, this uh, is again within the scope of the Operations and Finance uh, Portfolio Holder. Um, there are two recommendations for this one. Uh, so, Cabinet is being asked to approve the transfer of reserves as detailed in Appendix A including a figure of uh, 135,910 and 36 pence to general fund balances and 67,104 to the housing revenue account balances. And the second one is to note the current levels of reserves remaining. And again, because my expertise is not in this area, <laughs> if I can pass this along to yourself, Becky. Yeah, last one from me. <laughs> So, uh, as you've already mentioned, this report is to advise members of the levels of reserves and seek approval to repurpose unspent reserves following a recent review by CMT and the Executive Director of Finance. So, each year we undertake a review of EMR reserves that we've set aside for specific purposes, and there are some occasions where, where those are underspent or not required for one reason or another. Um, and the purpose of the annual review is to identify those, to make those funds available and, and put them back into general fund balances that can be used for different purposes. So, um, as you've already Noted for the for the recommendations, there's 135,910 pound 36 being being um, written back to general fund and 67,104 pounds to the housing revenue account. Have you got any questions? I'm happy to take them. Yeah, I've just got one question. Are these figures just generally in alignment with sort of previous um, years? Well, each year it can vary because we're, we're looking, we've gone through the whole list of earmark reserves, so it, it might be that some years are bigger than others and some years then there aren't so many. 
um, but because we undertake a thorough review, it depends on the size of the reserve and if it can be for a number of different reasons why they're getting written back. Maybe it was not required or there was an underspend or the grant that we'd received was we got more grant, for example. So um, I would say um, that it, it doesn't, it's not something that's a level each year that we would, we would look at. It does depend on circumstances each year. Thank you for going through that. Does anybody have any questions or comments? No. Okay, so yeah, that we have the uh, recommendations. Um, should we just vote for both of those at the same time? Is that okay? On block, yeah. So who would like to uh, move that one? Uh, Councillor Summers and second. I believe I got Councillor Thompson just in there. And uh, who would like to vote in favour of that? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. So I believe we're entering uh, the restricted content, I believe. One moment. Oh, apologies. Oh, yes, scrap metal. How could I forget? <laughs> so um, I'm just going to go straight to Councillor Summers, who, of course, is the expert on scrap metal. <laughs> right, OK. No, the expert on scrap metal is sat over there. So, um, and and uh, she wrote the policy because we don't have one, essentially, is why we're bringing it to Cabinet. So, um, And yes, uh, the policy was uh, out to consultation um, on the 20th of July. It went through the licensing committee, um, which um, I have to note that um, a colleague did have some issue with it going through the licensing committee. Um, so we, we perhaps should put that through scrutiny next time is, uh, is just for point of note. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the licensing committee normally dealing with um, licensing matters uh, were deemed um, good enough to, uh, to put that policy to to have a look at. Um, but uh, I mean, it is coming through us and it is going through co uh, full council as well. Uh, but uh, still, uh, I take on board the point that was raised with me. So um, yes, uh, we've obviously put it out to consultation. We've had um, we've had responses received, um, and we've uh, also got a voluntary a code of conduct conduct which we are looking to make voluntary, which is attached at Appendix Five. So not a statutory part of the policy, but um, something we'd hope to um, have our any new applicant follow. Um, to uh, to meet what we'd expect of them. So, um, assuming everybody's had a look at it and uh, it already has had plenty of eyeballs on it, um, I think we'll just if, if we've got any questions about it, the recommendation is is basically to move um, uh, that I move the draft scrap metal policy is suitable for adoption, um, and I'll, I'm happy to move them now. But uh, I will hand over to. Um, to Sarah Gear, in case she's got anything to add to that. Thank you. No, nothing to add. Thank you. No, no problem. But yeah, um, so yes, uh, thank, thanks. Uh, while I've got the opportunity to uh, officers for, especially you, Sarah, for working hard on getting these policies done and putting them through um, at a rapid pace. We had a few go through full council the other night that didn't get any airtime, but um, so I, I didn't get opportunity to thank you. But uh, yeah, they are coming through at a rapid pace and we're catching up with things that uh, were way late during COVID. Even after three years, it's still uh, built up, isn't it? So uh, so that's, that's essentially it, bar any questions. Anybody else? No. Councillor Summers is uh, moving the recommendation that Cabinet consider the draft scrap metal policy 2024 to 2028 as suitable for adoption, subject to the revised code of conduct being incorporated. Who would like to second that? That's uh, Councillor Tina, Ken Lemons, and uh, a vote for that, please. That's unanimous. So we're moving on to agenda item 11. So this is where we are looking to exclude the press and public. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Number 10, all right, okay. Um, oh, publication of planning and monitoring reports. Let me just bring that up. <coughs> Let me just 
just bring that up now. So um, on this, uh, this is the publication of the planning and monitoring reports. And um, essentially what we have here is uh, three reports to be published to the council's website. Um, two of this, two of these were recommending that they are published with the approval from AD and portfolio holder. Um, so these reports are factual and don't require decisions. Uh, thus, uh, any reason to decrease the bureaucratic burden, I'm certainly a, a supporter of. So just to re-emphasize, these are factual reports, two of the three. Um, so the democratic accountability is, is of course, the portfolio's approval to, um, to approve as laid out in recommendation three. So to go through this in more detail, um, uh, I do actually want to talk about uh, uh, the community infrastructure levy, sorry, as well. Uh, there's two applications um, on this one, and um, those are the works in the St. Edith's uh, Church, and also on the uh, Tamar <coughs> Road, we've got bought, um, a spot there where there's gonna be the erection of um, a community board, uh, a pole and a bench, um, but, um, and also just to mention as well on SIL, um, this is a conversation that's taking place within the local planning, uh, local plan working group that I'm currently chairing at the moment. And the idea is we, we want to try and boost the number of applications for next year. So that's something that I'm trying to commit to and, and improve for next, for next year. Um, but if I can pass over to um, the um, uh, Assistant Director Anna Miller, who hopefully will go into more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So we've got three reports tonight, um, which are attached in appendices A, B and C. We've got the Authority Monitoring Report. What that does, it just takes the policies in the local plan and it looks at how we're doing it, implementing each. Um, so it's, it's a really good way of evaluating how well those policies are doing. Do they need amending? Are they as good as they are, etc.? So that 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 sets out what's in Appendix A. In Appendix B, we've got housing delivery paper. This looks in a lot more detail at housing delivery. So number of completions, number of affordable housing completions, how the local plan housing allocations are, or if they are delivering, like they said, we said that they would do in the local plan. What the timescales are for some of those sites coming forwards. So again, that's in Appendix B. Both of those two are the factual ones. Um, if you want to talk through any particular points, I'm happy to take questions. Um, but in the large part, they are factual. So um, the recommendation is to to delegate those for publication in future years. It's something that ISAG picked up last year, actually, and questioned why they were going um, because of their factual nature. Um, and then in um, Appendix C, we've got. Um, we talk about SIL, Community Infrastructure Levy, um, which is split into two different components. We've got a strategic component, which is 80% of SIL goes towards strategic infrastructure projects, and 15% goes towards neighbourhood infrastructure projects. There is a 5% there which goes towards um, like administration costs for running SIL, because SIL actually takes quite a lot of time and effort to, um, to implement. So... Um, the reason why that one isn't delegated and I think should still come to Cabinet is because we can, as an authority, make decisions on what that strategic um, spend should be. So it's currently set as regeneration and it is currently supporting quite significantly future High Street Fund budgets, um, which is something you'll hear more about in January at the full council meeting on the future High Street Fund budget. But technically, we can put it towards any other sort of strategic infrastructure project that we might want to. So there's a decision there every year just to, just to sort of clarify that. And then secondly, the neighbourhood sill pot. We have a process within the authority which starts around July of every year when uh, members are invited to bid for the money in the neighbourhood sill pot. And it currently stands at around £100,000-ish. Um, uh, and it's a... It doesn't matter how much you want to put in, it's what, it's what the project is that matters. So we ask for one project per ward each year. And um, if the 
the pot of money is oversubscribed. There's a decision there for Cabinet to prioritise what the money should be spent on. But equally, we've had two projects this year submitted, and it's really for approval that um, you're happy that those two go ahead and the neighbourhood seal pot is spent. I would say that both projects are seal compliant. Um, that is that they, they both deal with infrastructure, which is the key component of implementing neighbourhood seal. So uh, any questions, happy to to answer. Thank you. Thanks for going for that report. Uh, just to mention those two amounts of those two SIL projects are, are very similar. Uh, the first one at St. Ethiscus is uh, 5,850 and the second one um, is 5,180. Uh, has anybody got any questions or comments that they'd like to raise? Councillor Clements? Just to say it's, 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 it's been a challenge but I'm really pleased that one of those projects sits in the Wilnicott Ward, the Tamar Road. Um, it's something that residents have asked for and we've never been able to to um, to get there. Um, so having the, the, the chance to um, apply for SIL money, and I know that Councillor Maycock has been leading the leading the charge on that. So it's really, really good to see it being spent locally. Has anybody got any more comments or questions? Okay, so uh, shall we just vote on block on that one? Is that okay? So I probably don't need to go through the recommendations. You can see they're there um, and there are five in total. Um, who would like to move that? Oh, mm, that's a good question. Probably, sh well, actually I'll take your advice on this. The question I have is, as it sits in my ward, am I allowed to take, am I allowed to vote? Do you consider you've got a, uh, a, a pecuniary interest in this? It's, it's a matter for yourself to decide that. Not at all. <laughs> okay, who would like to move that? Uh, Councillor Thompson, and second is Councillor Cooper. All in favour? That's unanimous on that one. I think we're finally here. <laughs> Dare I say it? <laughs> Thank you for the nod, Andrew. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I believe I've got to read this paragraph out, isn't it? Okay. So um, in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities, um, regulations 2012 and section 100A of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing information to the public. Are we safe to continue? Oh, yes, of course. Can I have a proposer? Councillor Tina Clements. And second is Councillor Cooper. All in favour? Happy to have